So please stick around until the end of this video because I have a free preset pack that I have for Serum, which is the synth that we are going to be learning the basics of synthesis with on this video today. And along with that, I also have a track that I've made using all the sounds from the uh, preset pack so you can hear for yourself what the pack sounds like. It's kind of an evil track, to be honest. I make a lot of weird, evil sounding stuff. So before we get into it, there are four basic things about a synthesizer that you need to know. And honestly, I know synths vary a lot in complexity, but if you can wrap your head around these four things, you understand a synthesizer. Different synths vary in functionality for these four basic premises. In general, these are the only things you need to know to get into synthesis at the basic level. The very first part of the synth is called the oscillator. Now, the oscillator is the first of our four components, and it is kind of the engine of the entire synth. It is where the sound is created. The reason it's called an oscillator is it's an oscillating waveform or a wave shape that's repeated at a very high frequency level. In other words, it's oscillating really quickly, so quickly in fact that it's perceptible by our ears as sound pressure. There are a few basic waveforms that compromise the general shapes that you're going to see on all synthesizers. Let's go through them now. When we open up Serum, you're going to see OSCA and OSCB, or oscillator A and B. Uh, what we have pulled up here in our first oscillator is a sine waveform. Here's what that sounds like. Now if I change the wavetable position, this is what we call a saw. A triangle. A square. Each one of these different waveforms have super identifiable characteristics about them, but in general you can think of saws and squares as more of a harsh, aggressive sound, and triangles and sines as a smoother sound. I tend to go for things like a square or a saw when I'm developing a really gritty bass, and I tend to go for a sine or a triangle whenever I want a smoother lead line. Now, the next and arguably the most important form of a uh, tone shaping capability that we have on a synthesizer is what's called the filter. Now, if you're familiar with a frequency response chart, this is the exact same thing. On the left side of the filter are the lowest frequencies, and on the right side of the filter are the highest frequencies, anything from 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. The first thing that a filter is gonna load up on most synths, including Serum, is what is called a low pass filter. It's essentially taking a lot of the higher end sound on our oscillator and then cutting it out of the uh, audible spectrum. Now what you'll find is this tends to give things that were once really harsh a more mellow sound. For example, square waves were a very harsh sound whenever we first played them. Here's that sound again. But if we put it on a filter, all those harsh high-end responses are now cut out of the actual mix. Now there are three basic kinds of filters. There are a low-pass filter, which is what we just heard. There is a band-pass filter and a high-pass filter. A high-pass filter does exactly what it sounds. It's the opposite of a low-pass filter. It's going to let just things that are the high-end part of the range leave the, uh, the filter. Then we also have a band-pass, which takes the middle frequencies and lets just those out. Let's hear what those sound like. Another common control that you're going to find on pretty much every filter is what's called the resonance. The resonance is going to boost the peak frequency of any filter. So for example, if I turn up the resonance here, the crest of our filter is going to become more accentuated. Here's what that sounds like. The other control you're always going to find on a filter is the filter cutoff. This controls at what frequency we begin to start cutting or filtering. Now on analog equipment you're going to find the exact same things, but what makes Serum really great is all this is represented graphically. You'll find a low pass, a band pass, and a high pass filter on essentially any analog synth as well as on digital synths, only in the digital landscape we can get a little bit weirder. For example, Serum has this really strange reverb filter which emulates the sound of reverb. <laughs> or 
a formant filter, which emulates the sound of a voice. Now, the third element to a synth is what is called the envelope, otherwise known as the ADSR. Now, an envelope controls the dynamic quality of your synth. It controls how loud the initial hit of the initial note was. It then controls how long that note is played, and it also controls how quickly that note decays. Now, I mentioned that an envelope is also called an ADSR. Now, what does ADSR stand for? It stands for attack, decay, sustain, and release. It is through these four terms that we can begin to understand exactly what an envelope does. Attack refers to how quickly the initial note started. For example, if we have a zero attack, it's essentially what we've been playing already. It's not going to take any time before the note begins to activate, like this. That's zero attack. If I take the attack knob down here, and I turn it, suddenly we have one second of attack. Now watch the note rise on Serum. In order to reach the peak volume of our note, it took around one second to do so. Setting a really long attack is great for making ambience and large swells. Nah, that sounds terrible, doesn't it? Don't worry about it. We're gonna skip decay for a second and then go to sustain because sustain is at what volume you want your note to stay at after the initial attack. For example, if I take the sustain knob and then pull it down, we're essentially saying, I want you to attack at this level of volume and I want you to sustain at a lower volume. Let's make a really extreme example of that. You see now when I'm holding my note, the note is sustaining at a much quieter note than the initial hit. Just like that. Now, back to decay. Decay refers to the amount of time between the initial attack level and the sustain level. If we have a really short decay, we're gonna get to that sustained note super quick. But if we have a really long decay, suddenly it's gonna take two and a half seconds to get to our actual level of sustain volume on our synth. And here we lie. So let's make an attack that is not super short, but not instant. Let's set a decay to be around a second long. Sustain at a little bit higher volume than the example we were doing before. And the last thing we need to do is release. Release is pretty self-explanatory. Whenever you release the note from your controller or your synth, your analog synth, it's how long it takes the note to completely disappear. For example, if I set a one second release, it's gonna take one second after I take my finger off of the controller for Serum to let go of the note completely. That's all there is to an envelope. So, so far in our signal, we've taken a basic square wave from our oscillator, we've taken a filter and cut off a lot of the high end, and we've set an envelope to have a fast attack, but not instant, and then sustain at a lower volume, and then release that last one second long. The last basic part of a synth is what is called the LFO. LFO stands for Low Frequency Oscillator. And if you remember, whenever we were talking about the first oscillators, I talked about how they oscillated at a really high frequency. It's oscillating really quickly, so quickly in fact that it's perceptible by our ears as sound pressure. In order for sound to be perceptible by our ears, oscillators need to oscillate their waveform at a really high level of oscillation. A low frequency oscillator is generally imperceptible from human ear. Now, if we look on Serum, the default LFO from Serum is set up as a triangle wave. If it's imperceptible from human ears, why have this low frequency oscillator in the first place? Well, we use LFOs as sort of invisible hands to control other things. For example, if I wanted to take this filter and have it move this way and move it that way, well, I can control it with the mouse, like so. But that's not very practical. I cannot do that for 12 cents all playing at the exact same time in my Ableton session. But what I could do is I could drag this LFO1 over to the top of our filter cutoff and then whenever I play a note, 
it's going to move in the shape of our LFO. Now I can set the rate of the LFO either synced to the time of our song, like this. Or I could set it to whatever I want it to be. Take BPM off, make it really, really fast. Now let's say we wanted to animate a bunch of different things with our LFO. Cool. Let's also animate the resonance of our filter. And you know what? Let's make the wavetable into a slightly weirder wavetable. Now if you see if I change the wavetable position, it's going to animate this weird looking waveform of the oscillator to kind of move in different ways. Well, I can either do that with the mouse or I can tell it to do it with the same LFO. Now if I play it, doesn't sound great, <laughs> but it's, it's using the LFO. Now, the difference between an analog LFO and a digital LFO is typically with analog gear, the LFO is going to be a fixed shape, typically coming in two or three different patterns. You can have an LFO as a typical square wave, saw wave, sine wave, or, or perhaps a few other unique options depending on the synth. With digital synths, we find a lot of the times they're gonna come with ways to build your own shapes of LFOs, or you can go into like a preset bank and decide weird shapes of LFOs uh, so you can begin to shape your music in really unique fashions. So I'm gonna set it to BPM sync at one quarter note. Um, I'm going to set it this to some weird waveform I have not seen before. And then I'm going to have it animate the cutoff, the resonance, and the wavetable position. And then watch how it moves within the shape of this crazy LFO pattern that we've made. And there we go. <laughs> we have a really crappy sounding, fully functioning synth. Just to prove my point that I can make something slightly audible, here is a better example with a few different uh, settings and a few different wavetables. That's all you really need to know to get into the basics of a synth. If you happen to have Serum, or if you have just downloaded Serum, I made a preset pack so you can begin to start augmenting these different settings and make sounds that sound nice right off the bat. These sounds are crafted around Dark Wave and Future Bass, so it's kind of an aggressive sounding pack. But if you like that gnarly kind of music, I, I got you with this preset pack. Uh, in order to show what these settings sound like, I've also created a track called Dirt Eater. So yeah, enjoy the track. Um, the link to the presets are in a Google Drive in the description below. Um, and I hope this was helpful. See you next time. no friend.